So, I love Legend of Zelda, like a lot, and I want to make my own Legend of Zelda style temple. But, as I figured out, I have no idea how to do that. I have no idea how to make a fun layout, I have no idea how to bring in fun mechanics. Uh, so, you know, we're learning, we're working on it. And fortunately, I have a little bit of experience playing D&D. And I've, you know, I've built a couple D&D maps and run through them. I think they're super fun. I feel like that's probably a good starting place. So that's what we're going to be working on today. So we're going to be working on bringing in D&D or really any tabletop role-playing game style map into Unreal Engine. And this is really designed for like rapid prototyping because I want to bring in a lot of levels because I have a lot that I need to learn. And I don't want to start off with, you know, building the biggest project that I can possibly build from the ground up with no experience. You know, one of my mantras is, you know, fail faster because failure is how you learn. You do something, it doesn't work, you do it again. So anyway, that's what we're working on today is kind of rapid prototyping dungeons. This is really just getting the walls and the floors up and we're gonna build this here. For anybody that's played D&D or any you know, Pathfinder or tabletop role playing game, you might recognize something similar to this and this can go up pretty quick. So let's just go ahead and play through it real quick here. Let me show you what we're working with. And of course, we've got our character from the last setup. We don't have a model yet, but I'm hopeful that we'll have one soon. And we have our, you know, just real basic enemies. In a future episode, we're going to be working on actually modeling our enemies, making them a little bit smarter, adding some, you know, better mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So I think... But... We have a real good setup right now. Yeah, get out of here, you. Yeah. It's amazing what just even some really, really simple enemies can do to make your game a little bit more fun. Huh. <laughs> Died on the shield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because even with nothing in the game you know we don't have any dungeon dressings we don't have any traps we don't have any puzzles we don't have anything we just have a couple enemies that run at you it's still fun to play Ooh, get out of here <laughs> anyway okay let's go ahead and get to the meat of this how to bring in D, &D style battle maps okay so we're gonna go ahead and start off in dungeon draft here And of course, you know, you can use whatever sort of map making software that you like, uh, any ma any battle maps that you have that you find online with permission, um, you know, whatever. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm actually just going to go ahead and randomly generate something here just to show, you know, we're doing it from scratch. We're doing it all in, all in real time. Okay, let's look at this dungeon here. Is this dungeon exciting? Um, yeah, it could be. Yeah, you've got some... Don't necessarily have to tackle it from one direction. Take a look at a couple other dungeons here. Yeah, all right. This looks good. We'll take this. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish that up. And now we're going to go ahead and export as a PNG. I would I would recommend the PNG because you're going to want you're going to want it to scale correctly, or at least scale pretty. And we're going to go and export that. We're going to call this dungeon test your two cool now that that's exported and like i said you can just grab these from everywhere you don't have to start here i'm just kind of showing you you know what i'm doing we're going from the ground up and how to do it in real time okay we're all done let's head back to unreal engine okay back in unreal engine here we're going to go ahead and just get a new level New level, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna do this because I like it. Save what we changed. And change that back to lit. Cool. Okay, this should look pretty familiar. And this is this isn't necessarily a beginner tutorial. But you know, I'm <laughs> I'm not an expert, so <laughs> we'll go from there. Okay, cool. First thing we're gonna go ahead and create a new landscape. 8x8, eight eight. yeah, we'll do 8x8. Eight eight. We can always shrink it down later if we want. Cool, we now have a landscape. And we're gonna do a 
plain. And I'm going to bring that up just, just a smidgen there so we don't get any Z fighting there. Cool. Okay. The test engine that we built earlier, go ahead and import that. Cool. There it is. Opens as a texture and on our plane here, you can create your own. Ooh, got that a little quick there. You can create your own default material or you can just drag and drop it onto the plane. It'll create a material for you. And I actually like to go in and just modify the metallic and the roughness just to make it a little bit easier to see. Roughness, you want to set that up to, I don't know, 0.9 or something. Cool. There we go. All right. And you can see, hey, there's our dungeon map. Let's go ahead and make this guy a little bit bigger. And uh, hey, there we are. It's in the level. Pretty sweet. We can drop down and we can play it right now. Just get a sense of scale. Ooh. Well, I mean, it might be fun to be ginormous. You know, you're you're the, the boss enemy, but let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. <laughs> let's go ahead and make that a lot bigger, actually. Okay, how's that doing now? Rooms are... This is actually probably probably to scale right now if we're talking about five foot. But I still want it bigger. Scale that guy up again. And let's check this one out. Yeah, there we go. Corridors are kind of tight. Rooms are kind of open. Yeah, I like the scale. Yeah, looks good. Cool. So here's where the magic happens. And we're going to be using a tool that came out a little while ago. This isn't default. It came out was uh, part of the part of the free assets. I hugely recommend picking up this tool because it, it makes it's made my life so much easier. So it's just just a wall spline. That is all we're doing. And let me see if I can't find this in the store real quick here. Yep, procedural wall system. Yeah, it is fantastic. Highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the uh, in the description down there. It came out as free. I don't know how much they're charging right now. You can make these. Um, there are some really good tutorials out there. I've used them in the past. This this tool is just, you know, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this guy, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of follow follow our dungeon around. <laughs> That's all we have to do. And I'll keep recording, but I think for the most part, I'm going to be a little bit quiet. I'll probably speed this up because there's there's not really much to it. We're just making walls. Okay, once you finish up with that, do it again. All right, once you finish up with that, do it again. Okay, looks like we're done. We got all our walls in there. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the space again. Maybe. Oh, just to, just taking a minute to load here. Hey, that's fun. 
Let's go ahead and play at current camera position. Cool. Okay, so we have our D&D level laid out here. You see the walls aren't nearly big enough, but we're gonna change that in a minute here. But just for kind of getting a sense of scale, you know, I like it. It's interesting too that like when I'm looking at a D&D map, you know, my eyes immediately. Okay, this area here is a no-go. That's just a dead area. This is a dead area here. When you actually get in there and you play it, I think, well, that's not how buildings are laid out. Why would you why would you make a dead space here? Why would you make nothing here? There obviously should be something here. And I'm going through all the trouble of making this area anyway. We may as well put something in there. <laughs> anyway. Okay, yeah, I think I like the layout. I like the placement. I think every oop, we got a little problem there. So if that happens, where was that? Anywhere you have an ending. If you come across that, it's, it's pretty simple to fix it up. If you can remember where it was. Which I can't. Nah, oh well. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, okay, looks pretty good. Looking pretty sharp. I think we've got some big areas. We have some hidden rooms in here. Tight choke points, room for doors, locks, and keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, I'm pretty happy with the layout. So, here's what we're going to do. is We're going to go in here. We're going to check every single wall spline. I guess we only have four. We're going to change the Z value to, I don't know, five. Let's make them high walls. And now you can see the nature of it has changed pretty significantly. Because we can't, we don't have that vision anymore. We can't see over everything. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, looking good. Okay, and of course, you know, if you if you want to change anything on these with this particular tool, super easy. You just uh I don't know. Oh we're in <laughs> we're in the pillars right now. Um, you can just change them. You can use your own your own materials, obviously, which I think you should. Get rid of the pillars, wall settings, plaster, <laughs> plaster dungeon. How strange. <laughs> Chain link. <laughs> ah, that'd be stupid. Stone. Ooh, classic. Yeah, let's keep the stone. Go and apply that to our pillars as well. Nice. Okay, looking good. So you can see it's pretty, pretty straightforward just to get the actual walls up and going here. Let me show you a couple more things that I've you know kind of discovered along the way, and then we'll then we'll probably wrap up. Okay. Okay. There are two ways to do ground to do your floors here, and I'm going to show you both. Well, I'm sh I'm sure there are probably more. So do, you know, do whatever you want. Okay, let's take a look at the two ways that I do them. The first way is, you know, if you don't think your player is going to be coming outside, if you're not really worried about it, they're going to spend their whole time in here. You can just make the entire landscape here your floor. There are a number of different tools out there. Unreal Sensei recently put out a video for auto landscape and put out a just just the best tool couldn't couldn't recommend it anymore and we're gonna go ahead and use that tool right now again you know you can do this however you want but this is just so flipping powerful okay yeah I think I'm happy enough with that okay looks good or does it yeah I'll like throw some plants and stuff on there it'll be fine okay so we got our that's that's way number one. And like I said, if you and you can put anything you want in here, like cracked cobblestone or I don't know those kinds of bricks, whatever you want. 
throw them in there. And you can do your landscape however you want. Let me show you the second way though. And the second way is gonna be so tedious. <laughs> Maybe not tedious. Tedious isn't the right word, but it's gonna take it's gonna take an extra minute, but it's it's gonna look a lot better. And the bonus is you'll get a roof out of it as well if you want. Okay, so let me let me just go ahead and cut a hole in this here real quick, just because I think that's gonna look better. So it's 20, 21, 22, 23. Boom. Okay, we have an entrance. Let me take that down to size two. Nice. Yeah, looks good. We have door, we entrance. Yeah, so it looks, a, I think, a little bit weird. Right now, with no roof on it, it's probably okay. But let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and go make something. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and I have a, a blank. I don't know, I was... I really wish I could set up Blender and Unreal Engine to have the same navigation scheme because switching back and forth between the two is <laughs> such a pain. Okay, so here we are in Blender. We've got a nice blank space here. Let's go ahead and Shift A to add a mesh. We're gonna add a, nope, not a mesh. We're gonna add an image. We're gonna add a reference image and we're gonna go grab it we call that uh, dungeon example two, I think. Dungeon test two. And of course, Blender's gonna load it all wonky here. So we're gonna go ahead and just change that to all zeros. Yep, looks good. Okay. And I just like to rename everything, just to keep it easy. We're gonna change this from Empty to battle map. Babble map. Bat bull, bat bull map. Okay. And here's where things get pretty fun. We're gonna go ahead and add in a plane. Grab it on this grab. Exclude the Z. Bring it in, scale it down. I'm going to get the overhead here. Scale it down again. Grab, exclude the Z. And I like to keep keep everything just a little bit bigger. We'll go ahead and make that invisible just so we can, or at least in x-ray mode, so we can see through it a little bit. So yep, just, I like, I like to make sure the roof is going to overhang the walls just a little bit. Because sometimes things don't scale exactly correctly. Okay, we're now in edit mode, and let's go ahead and we're going to put a rope cut in here. And I like to try to keep it on the outside edge. So you can see my rope cut is just lining up just there. Okay, now we're going to extrude on the, what is this? Extrude on the Y. Take that all the way up. And this is all we're doing. It's all, it's a rope cuts and extrusions all the way down. Extrude on the X all the way over here. Extrude on the X. Oops, extrude on the Y, my bad. Up here, anytime you get to a place that needs a new rope cut, well, you just go ahead and do that. And I like to be a little bit aware of just how to make my life easier. Oh shoot, see, I already didn't do it. So take this to the end here, and now extrude again. On the X, we can take that up to there, it's probably good. Extrude on the Y. Extrude on the Y. All three of these guys here. Go ahead and extrude on the X. Extrude on the X. 
extrude on the Y. <laughs> you get the deal. I'll probably just go ahead and fast forward from here. Because I think you probably... Probably got the idea. All right, I think that's probably all I want to do with that. Cool. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and extrude it up. And what are we calling that? Okay, let's give it a point 0.1. Okay, so now you can see we have a pretty nice looking floor slash roof slash, you know, whatever we want. And part of the advantage of doing it this way is, let's say later on, I want, I don't know, I just, I want like a third floor here. You know, you can just make, make a new floor. Um, yeah, so now we have We've got a, th a third floor. We have a roof just for this. Um, so yeah, if you really want, you can just go ahead and select some things and just go ahead and delete them out. You can add more rope cuts. So if you want, you know, stairs or poles or cannons or a skylight or something, it's not really that tricky to put them in. Cool. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this part here. Okay, looks good. Let's make sure the geometry looks good. We're gonna merge by distance. Hey, 14 duplicate vertices we got rid of, cool. And just to make sure everything look a little bit better, let's put a bevel on there. Hmm. So bevel is a good tool because if something is jacked up, bevel won't work. I happen to know what it is. Go into object mode, select all, shift A, all transforms, boom, now we got a bevel, nice. Okay, last thing here is let's go ahead and make sure we set our origin. Set origin, you know, I think our 3D cursor is pretty much in the middle. So I'm gonna put my origin there. It's gonna make scaling easier later. Okay, let's go ahead and export this now. File, export. Oh, nope, 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 nope. We need to set materials. I'm sorry, not materials, UVs. UV editing. So you got a couple options for UV editing on this one. You can just do a straight unwrap. That's gonna look like hot garbage. Smart UV project is gonna look, you know, much better. You can also do a cube projection, which is actually my favorite. You're gonna get some errors. that will say light mass overlapping down here though. These are the edges. I'm not really that concerned about light mass overlapping, but you know, to each his own. Okay, now that that's done, Let's go ahead and export that. File, export, FBX. We'll save it to our 3D models and we'll call it dungeon example. We'll limit that to our selected objects. And here's the thing, go normals only, go face. Change that to face, that'll be better. Exports, and let's go ahead and bring that into Unreal. Okay, we're back in Unreal Engine. Let's go ahead and grab that export real quick. Okay, default settings should be, <laughs> default settings should be okay. I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit on the small side because I didn't scale up anything. Ooh, it's a little bit on the small side. Okay. Let's go ahead and scale that up. Uh, let's do 15 by 15, see how that works. 
20 by 20. How's that working? Thirty by thirty is too much. Five by twenty-five. This is part of what I was saying about doing a little bit of a little bit of finagling here. I think we got it. Oop, not quite. A little janky right there. So this part I was saying, like, make sure you do it just a little bit bigger. Make sure you really go all the way to the edge or just over, because otherwise you're gonna be left with some gaps. Okay, I think we're good though. You can see over here where we Bumped up the floor, pushing through our mesh, which that is totally fine. I like that. Okay, let's put some material on this. Let's do crack. Let's do a cracked floor. I think I have something here already. Castle cobblestones. Perfect. I love it. Or do I? Yeah, guess so. Okay. I always create a material instance. Actually, I think this is already a material instance. Yeah, so just create a duplicate. And we're going to call this example dungeon four. And that looks good, but big. So let's fix that. Highlighting is set to five by five, change it to one by one. Nope, wrong way, 10 by 10, 15 by 15. Yeah, I think that's good. But you know what, I think we should rotate this by 90 degrees also. <laughs> we're not, we're not rotating? Oh, I see. The tiling looks kind of bad from up here, but I think once you're in the dungeon, I don't think you can really notice. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so we have floor. And yeah, I think our floor looks pretty good. Yeah, we could probably make those a little bit smaller. Yeah, we probably should. Let's make this smaller. Let's do 20 by 20. Or do we want to do 25 by 25? Yeah, what the heck, that looks good. Okay, so now we've got a floor. Like I said, it, it takes a little bit of extra work to get this floor, but it's not, it's not, it's not really that much more work. Ooh, uh oh, we gotta fix that. You can see there are some places where they overlap. I don't really think it's that noticeable, unless you're looking for it, but you know, who knows. But yeah, so we've got a floor, got a floor for a dungeon. There are a couple of little pieces that we need to need to fill up. So if we wanted to, you know, here, I'll show you. Let's take this right here. We're going to use our same door trick. There we go. Door. Hey, door is right where I wanted it to. Great. Um, so now, if we were to go ahead and put a roof on this bad boy, let's go ahead and do that. So I just, I literally just duplicated it and raised it on up. We can take off the wall caps now because we don't really need them. But it might be neat to keep them. Okay, 
So now we're inside. You can see. Yeah, it looks okay. We have to rebuild the lighting, obviously. Um, but we have, you know, a definitive inside and outside. We, I would probably just cover these up with like bushes or something like that, but you know, <laughs> yeah. So we've got, you know, this is, this is the basics of a dungeon. So this, this is, the, these are the tools and the process that I've been using to really, really, really test out my dungeon. Uh, and like I said earlier, if I wanted like a third level, if I wanted to come out here and come up to another room in Blender. Actually, you know, let's just do that right now. Where are we? I think we're going into this castle courtyard, or maybe this castle courtyard. I don't remember. We'll duplicate this one, though. Okay. Yeah, so if we wanted to build, you know, a second story, we can just put a second story on there. And I won't work through the whole process, but, you know, it's just grab some more, <laughs> grab some more splines and just put them right on top here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at it here. So you can see we have, we've got a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid dungeon set up here in, I don't know, an hour's work? Not too long. There is some, you know, obviously some fine tuning and some finagling you can do. Like I think our floor and our ceiling are just a little bit off there. Uh, but you know, I went ahead and put our put a breakable mesh on there for our door that we can't get through. It's too narrow. <laughs> oh, how funny! All right, let's change that. Okay, so you can see we have our level pretty pretty well generated here, or at least built. Um, there's a lot that you can do on this still. You know, throw in enemies, throw in your dungeon dressings. Throw in a lot of your doors, you know, obviously we didn't get the uh, the placement exactly correct, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so there's, there's so much that you can do with this system, and I'm really, really excited to use it some more. I think going in and, and using Blender or, you know, whatever tool you'd like to go ahead and generate a floor or build a floor, I think that's going to be to your advantage because you could make your roof. Um, and now you can have, you know, an actual interior and you can have courtyard areas. Okay, so I think that's pretty much just going to do it for this time, for this, this episode anyway. Next time we're going to be looking a little bit more at, you know, how do I make the dungeon fun? And we're going to be working on, you know, mechanics, mechanics like this. We have a completely dark level. And we have, you know, if we bring in light, if we give the player the opportunity to generate some light, you know, what does that look like? Is that fun? Is it not fun? This idea of like shooting burning arrows at torches to light them up. Is it fun? Is it not fun? I don't know. I don't know. We've got, we've got work to do. So let's go ahead and work on this next time. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll catch you next time. All right. Take care.